Ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, the title of my talk is OpenFL Console Support. Um, and as it sounds like, our project is to take the OpenFL library, which also means the low-level Lime library, and get it working on home game consoles. Am I waiting for anything? Should I just keep going? Am I, am I, am I starting? Am I going? You're very, very good. Fine. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I should keep going? You, you, can, you can keep going. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. So, by home game consoles, we mean things like the PlayStation Vita, the Nintendo 3DS, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 3, the Wii U, um, the big game consoles that everyone has, including the handhelds. And by handhelds, I mean handheld game systems, not just mobile, which we already support. But first of all, who am I, and why am I here talking to you guys? Uh, well, my name's Lars Say. I work for Level Up Labs, which is an independent game development studio. We are most well known for the Defender's Quest game series. Um, but I'm also a uh, open source contributor to the Hex world. I I'm a contributor to OpenFL um, and Hexflixel. And I also run some of my own libraries that aren't attached to any framework like Crash Dumper and FireTongue that some of you might have used. Uh, so that's my personal background. Um, but it's not just me on this project. There are several other people who are working with us. Um, basically, we put an organ a small organization together to split the cost of this project. And those people I want to thank is Nilsson Filk, who's right here, uh, Luce with, with Puzzle. Also, uh, Lucas Pope, who can't be here today, um, from 3909, most well known for his award-winning game, Papers, Please. And then me, but don't give me any applause. And then the people who are actually doing the work on this, the actual engineers who are um, putting their time in, is uh, Joshua Granick from OpenFL, and then also James Gray, who most of you have never heard of. He's an engineer in Texas who's Brilliant. And then Justo Delgado, is, is Justo here? No, I guess he's not here. And then me, I did a little stuff, but not as much as the others. Um, but also beyond that, there's a lot of people who have been very interested in getting uh, home game console support on um, Lime and OpenFL and also just Hex in general for a long time. And this is just a short sample of just dozens and dozens of names of people who have been interested. You know, the developers of all these games, um, as well as uh, some well-known figures like Adam Saltzman, uh, who created the original Flixel, um, his company, Finji. He said he's really interested in this. Tom Fulp, who is the, um, with Newgrounds and the Behemoth. He's, Tom Fulp has said, just as an individual, he's very interested in this. And then Stencil, which is an engine framework that's built on top of OpenFL and Lime, is very interested in seeing this happen. And then tons and tons of other people have told me, you know, let me know when this is working. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about timeline of this project. Phase one is uh, to get Yummy Circus, Defender's Quest, and Papers, please working on this system and kind of take all the bullets, you know, and be the first penguin off the ice flow that gets, you know, in there to, to kind of see how it works, work out all the kinks, figure out everything. And then phase two is to get your games working or your apps working on home game consoles. And we're still figuring out exactly what that's going to look like, but we wanted to just talk about this timeline we have so that um, you guys understand where we're coming from. We'll get into those details a little more in the talk. Um, so first I want to talk about the problem we're here to solve, which is the problem of traditional porting. Um, there's a lot of dedicated companies that you can go out to and be like, okay, I want to take Defender's Quest, and, or I want to take Papers, Please, and I want to put it on one console, like the PlayStation 4, and you'll get a quote anywhere from twenty-five dollars to $100,000 for a forked source code base that, you know, you fix your bug on upstream, it doesn't, it's not fixed downstream, you have to manage these separately, they're completely out of sync, one of them you're going to abandon sometime. Um, and the crazy part is that $25,000 to $100,000 is not an unreasonable figure for the amount of work involved of porting something from scratch. It's ridiculous. It's this huge problem that we all have. So, of course, we use Hex. Hex is brilliant. Hex is amazing. You know, I don't need to tell you guys that. You know, instead of one platform, you get all the platforms. Instead of this huge cost for a new platform, it's a much lower incremental cost. And you can use the same code base to, you know, to cover everything. And I don't need to convince you guys of that. So what is the issue? Well, the issue is one does not simply type line build Xbox and all your problems are solved. You know, at least not yet. And why is that? Why are consoles different? You know, it's like we've 
we're on Windows, Mac, Linux, HTML5, BlackBerry, uh, ties in, you know, iOS and Android, why, why haven't we added consoles yet? And the reason is that consoles are this unique, scary land of Mordor that, you know, we need to sneak our hobbits and eagles into. And um, the main problem is you have closed SDKs, you can't just download the SDK and look at it and just start working. You know, before you do that, you need to sign a contract in blood and, you know, get permission to look at it. And then once you've looked at it, you know, you, it's, it's probably unlike anything you've seen before. Um, but then you can't even start working just on your home PC. You need a hardware dev kit, which you also need permission to have off and you have to pay money for them. And if you don't pay money, you need to convince them to give you a loaner kit or something. And that requires a lot of time. And then all of this ha is, is all taking place in secret under NDA. And um, the really hard part is that it also doesn't let you use the regular stuff you're used to in the world of open source. You can't just use SDL. You can't just use OpenGL. You can't even just use Google because anyone who has solved problems on consoles is not allowed to talk about them publicly. There are, you, you know, there's mailing lists on like the, develop, the console developers like personal sites, but you know, I can't go into too much details, but it's not as convenient as Google or Stack Overflow or anything like that. And um, you're working with um, things that are not perhaps documented in the same way that we're used to. And um, it's, it's all done in secret, in hushes between other people, you know, and, and it's just not as um, convenient as we're used to. Um, and then the last part, which is probably the most important, is that is, is, is what we like to call certification hell, which is incredibly scary for someone who's not done it before, is that um, if you've never worked on consoles before, there is this very big and onerous certification process that is kind of inherited from the old days of when you would put out a game on a cartridge and it would never be patched ever. So it had to be like perfect. And there's still a lot of aspects of that still left in the console certification process where you have this huge checklist of technical requirements you need to fulfill. And the first time you fail, it gets kicked back to you. And you need to do it all over again. It takes a huge amount of time um, to go through. And so if we're gonna provide technology that's gonna work on consoles, we need to be reasonably assured that we're not going to get stuck in this mire of certification because it's, it's one thing to write something that works and it's another thing to write something that passes certification. And so these are all the problems we have to surmount when we're working on uh, consoles that we don't necessarily have on other, uh, the other traditional platforms that we've extended Hex and OpenFL and Lime to. So the solution is, um, we didn't come up with a name for it yet, but we're calling it Project Codename for now, which we'll change later. Um, but what is it? It is a console backend for Lime and OpenFL. And um, parts of it are the same and parts of it are new, but it's mostly the same. So it uses the same OpenFL API and the same Lime APIs that you've been using is, is the idea. So if you're writing Lime apps or OpenFL apps right now, um, you're not going to have to change much or perhaps even anything really um, for when the console backends are ready to start being able to add the console backend. We want to add a console backend just like, you know, Lime test Windows, we want to add Lime test Wii U. In fact, we already have that working and there'll be some demos uh, at the end of the project. Um, there are some parts that are new. Um, for instance, although you might use the same Lime assets pipeline and you know, various classes and things, there's a new backend, native backend to power the consoles and there is a new renderer because um, there's no way that we've been able to figure out to make just an OpenGL-like API. So there is a new, what we call console renderer. And I think an abstraction of that might actually already be on GitHub. I need to double check on that. But basically, so if you have been using the line level directly and you've been using, you know, just the OpenGL view, you might need to make a console renderer. But if you're using OpenFL, we're writing our own console renderer. So you'll just be able to just keep going straight if you're using OpenFL. With Lime, you have a little more work to do, but it's not much. What are the planned targets? There's six of them that we have planned, um, and they are the Wii U, the Nintendo 3DS, the PlayStation Vita, the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 3, and the Xbox One. Um, and in terms of progress, we have running demos running on the Wii U today. Um, we have access to dev kits and source code for everything except the 3DS. Um, and so I, and we got the rest of those fairly recently. So um, I'll go into details more in the talk about why we think we'll have a lot more progress on these other targets soon. But first, let's talk about how does it work. So if you're using Lime and OpenFL today, um, this, is what your co this is what your stack looks like in terms of libraries. Uh, for those of you who maybe haven't used Lime or OpenFL recently, there's been some changes. There's no longer uh, OpenFL native. There's no longer OpenFL HTML5. OpenFL is just now one library of basically nothing but hex code. And then Lime is your um, platform layer abstraction. And then it includes tools 
inside of Lime um, to do build stuff and things like that. So this is what you're using today if you're using um, Lime and OpenFL for your Windows, your Mac, your Linux, your Android, your iPhone. Um, and so let's say you wanted to start working on the Wii U. Well, we would add one library to your console stack, to your stack, and that would be the Lime Wii U library. And as a dependency, of course, is the native Wii U SDK. So um, if you wanted to, you know, when this is finished and available, you know, if you wanted to use this, you would have to show us that, you know, it's like I'm a certified Nintendo developer, I can see the secret stuff, and they're like, okay, here it is. And then you could um, start using this. This would come with pre-compiled binaries and tool chains to let you type Lime test Wii U and have Wii U executables pop out that you could go run on your Wii U dev kit. Um, the full console stack that we use internally to compile this monster from source uh, looks like this. And as you can see at the bottom, there's Lime 3DS, Lime Xbox One, Lime PS4, Lime Vita. Um, these are plans, some of these repositories have already been created and you know gotten to like Hello World. Um, and they each link against the native SDK for each of those consoles. And so basically this, you know, solving the legal architecture of this is as big a problem as solving the technical one. Um, we didn't want to be in a situation where someone would need to have every agreement with every console holder to see anything. Here you can just choose the platform you want to do, get that agreement in place, and then we can give you that thing. Um, is the idea when this is all finished. Um, but you can, so we have this library in the middle called Lime Console, which provides a kind of abstraction layer to all of the consoles, because the goal is to get all of them at once, um, as far as is reasonable. But you'll notice that there's this missing piece with question marks here. And this is um, probably the most interesting part of the challenge of what we've been solving. Okay, so the arrows are kind of messed up, but the red box connects to that. And um, basically, this stack here, this question mark stack is where we basically need to slot in some batteries to kind of power that last mile between um, the abstraction layer that connects to Lime and then on the low level, the native SDKs connecting up into in the bottom. And uh, this is what I call the console gap. And it consists of four kind of problems I've generalized here, which is um, tool chain stuff, which is basically, um, broadly speaking, all of the tooling and um, hex defs and defines and compiler defines and compiler flags and all that little low level stuff just to get to hello world and get hex cpp to compile at all. Um, you also have in hex cpp the standard library platform support for C++. There are holes and that are different on every single console for hex cpp that have to be patched in a unique way for each console. Um, then you have assets. Each one of these has their own way of handling assets and shaders and um, all that stuff. And so we need to find a way to hook up that in a way that will behave for that console. Um, and then also each of them has their own special way of rendering that it may or may not be anywhere close to a standard you're used to. And so those are all things we need to take care of and unify. Um, the first one's not too hard. Uh, the toolchain stuff, we pretty much someone who has access to this without any kind of special help, you know, just basic technical knowledge, you can mostly figure it out by trial and error. And um, you do that once for each console. The other three are kind of scary. And uh, this is where you really need batteries. You really need someone who knows what they're doing and is, this isn't their first rodeo, so to speak, as we say in Texas. Um, it's a kind of um, lend some assistance. And so what do we use for our batteries? What do we use to put into this to, to fill the console gap? So choice one is do it yourself. Um, just go in there, you know, guns blazing, and just build up, you know, six console backends from scratch, just get the SDK and start hacking away. And, um, and uh, with this stack, there is no reason uh, we or someone else couldn't do that to provide the battery layer. Um, but we wanted to release soon instead of a long time from now. And so we opted to license some technology from some people who really, really know what they're doing when it comes to consoles. And so we're pleased to announce that we have a partnership with WayForward Technologies. Um, for, they are a company that was established in uh, 1990. They've been around for you know 25 years. They've um, developed and published over 100 games for all sorts of systems. Uh, I think over 25 platforms. This, is everything from the Game Boy Color to the latest next-gen PS4 and Xbox One consoles. Um, I think they've even like released a game or two on like the Leapfrog Kids thing, and they, I think they're the first developer who's releasing a game on the Apple Watch. So they've been on every weird piece of hardware ever, and so 
they're helping us out. And so here's a just quick sampling of some games they've done. Even if you haven't heard the name WayForward, you might recognize some of their games. They do licensed games like Regular Show and Adventure Time, DuckTales Remastered, uh, their own original games, Mighty Switch Force and Shantai, uh, Half Genie Hero. Uh, they did Double Dragon Neon. So maybe you've played some of their games. Um, the technology they're licensing to us is called WayForward Engine or WF Engine. And um, it's 2D and 3D capable. It is for current gen and last gen systems and handhelds. Uh, so it supports the six targets that we're uh, looking at that we're interested in. And it is a low level um, battle tested uh, console layer abstraction that um, is all C++ based. So what's special about it? Why use this instead of something else? Well, first of all, it's C++ based. Um, WayForward has been really friendly and helpful to us. Um, so we have a good relationship with them. It's it, most important though is that it's tested. It's been used in actual shipping games because as I said, certification is such a big deal on consoles. When you're using something, you want to know that you've got a really good chance of getting, uh, of being able to sail through unscathed. And as a bonus, this is um, one of the few sorts of engines like this that works on the 3DS. Now, one thing that not everyone appreciates is that the 3DS is the biggest number one selling console platform of the current generation. Everyone's talking about like Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but 3DS has a bigger install base and it also has fewer games for it because it's really hard to develop for traditionally. Unity doesn't even work on it. They've just announced support for the new 3DS. So like for only a portion of the market and they'll eventually get to it maybe, you know, but um, we intend of course to have native, C native support and when we have that, we will be the first middleware that runs and supports the entire 3DS system. And of course, the other consoles will be um, part of this as well. So the WayForward Engine plugs this uh, console gap um, pretty well. And um, so we're happy to use that as our batteries for this, for this architecture. Um, now we need some picks or it didn't happen. So just as proof, this is uh, a Nintendo Wii U gamepad. Um, dev kit, and this is Mode, which is the stock demo from uh, Hexflixel, which is, of course, the community that I contribute to a lot. So um, this is running on the dev kit uh, today. I actually took that picture just before I left. Let's talk a little bit about our current progress in a little more detail. Um, we have lots of demos already running on this uh, console technology. We have Mode, which is the stock demo that comes with, from Hexflix. So we have Pirate Pig, which is kind of the complete little match three game to demonstrate OpenFL, you know, just like input and sound and text and whatever. Uh, we have 3D rotating animated colored cubes, just as like a stock demo um, that also runs on the system. We have Bunny Mark, you know, we have input from game pads and stuff. And in terms of dev kits that we actually have access to, so although we have the most actual progress of demos running on the Wii U, and the main reason we have more progress on the Wii U than anything else is just that we got that kit first, um, we now have access to the Wii U, the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation Vita, the Xbox One. Um, Nielsen um, has been doing a really good job of helping us uh, talk with Sony of Europe. Um, I had two PlayStation uh, Vita kits, but I left them at home like an idiot. Um, but anyway, so we have access to all these now. There, there's, um, we should have lots of progress really soon on these because we got most of them very recently, whereas the Wii U we've had for longer. So you should expect to see more uh, pictures and videos from us of progress of this system on uh, those dev kits. So let's talk a little bit more about timeline now that you understand the basic progress. So first we're gonna start with step one, which is to kind of go pretty easy on this. Um, focus on these three games first and get them out there, test the system, um, take all the bullets, so to speak, find all the bugs, fix them, um, and launch our phase one games. And the plan is, um, loosely speaking, to get all those shipped by the end of the year on at least one console platform each. Um, step two is to work out all the feedback and the kinks and you know get through the process and get some experience. And uh, incidentally, I should mention that these three games have pretty extensive coverage of the OpenFL API. Um, Yummy Circus is, of course, a networked multiplayer party game. Uh, Defender's Quest, of course, is a great example of the Flixel engine and, you know, putting lots of sprites on the screen and uh, will be a good test of my Flixel UE library and gamepad input and stuff. And then Papers, Please, of course, you know, is going to, is interested in launching on the Vita and so will be a good test case of um, all the touch inputs and things like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll have really pretty good coverage of the entire OpenFL API with these three games. So. That's useful. And then step three is where we're going to figure out um, how we're going to make this available to everybody else. And we're, we have those conversations in place with the various 
um, licensors and platform holders and stuff. And um, one of the reasons I came to WWX to do this talk is to find other interested parties who are interested in being part of our phase two so that we can start those conversations now and make sure that your interests are represented in all these negotiations and talks as we move forward and just get everything nailed down um, while we work out the practical and the technical aspects of things. And then step four is, you know, just keep rolling and add systems online one by one and just support all the things that we can um, until all six of these consoles are as well supported as Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android. Um, and so to summarize, you know, OpenFL and Lime already support micro consoles, you know, like the Huatron, the Amazon Fire TV, the Ouya, the Nvidia Shield. Um, and that's cool, that's nice. But we really want to support macro consoles. And so we want to go from this to this. And um, now, I believe it's time for some videos. So let's hope that this works. Will it work? Technology is so fickle. You know what? I'm going to go directly to the files themselves because don't ask PowerPoint to do a job for you. Okay, can you see that? Okay, this is mode. This is mode running on the Wii U. Um, and this is actually running in debug mode, so I didn't even put any optimizations or anything into it yet. Um, but this is this is um, mode, which is the stock Flixel demo. So we have Hex Flixel, one of the most popular uh, Hex and OpenFL libraries. Um, running on the Wii U today. <laughs> and as you can see, it's accepting gamepad input already. And um, so that's cool. And then the next demo I have here is of Pirate Pig, which is a stock, forgive my photography skills, it's really dark. Um, but this is Pirate Pig, which is a stock OpenFL demo which demonstrates, you know, input and text. You can see the text field is rendering correctly with the right font and it's updating. And we added some gamepad input to Pirate Pig so you could actually play it. Um, we'll also want to support, of course, the touch interfaces and stuff like that, um, which we'll definitely do. But just for this demo, I just used the controller stuff. And there's sound and um, so a lot of the, just the building blocks that you need are already in place. And we're just gonna take this momentum and just move forward as fast and as quickly as we can. So, um, all that being said, slide show, slide slide. are there any questions? Is it working? Hey, um, great talk, seems crazy enough. Um, do you plan to have a common shader language to support all these platforms? Yeah, okay, so that's a good, the question was do we ha plan to have a common shader language to support all these platforms? So um, I can't, I'm a little bound by some agreements to like talk about like the details of WayForward Engine, but it does have a solution in there to um, to um, kind of unify shaders across the consoles. And of course, we're, we're currently looking into whether it's possible to um, unify shaders on the OpenFL side so you don't have to write shaders for your uh, desktop targets and your console targets. And um, we're, 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 we're currently working through that. But so far, so good. And um, we haven't run into any huge problems. I'm not sure if we'll be able to unify shaders so like flash shaders on flash target will also work the same on console, but um, you know, we'll definitely be leaning on the work other people have done, like um, what Robert has been doing with graphics looks really, really interesting. But WayForward Engine has done a lot of stuff I can't necessarily talk about in detail, but that solves common issues like this. Uh, one other question is, um, you talked about the checklist, like the giant technical checklist. Mm -hmm. um, will OpenFL provide some of these uh, stuff? in the checklist or? Oh, you mean like 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 a service to like hold people's hand through the certification process or just yeah. tell you what it is? Yeah, um, so that's actually interesting. Um, um, right now we're, we're, we're um, focused on making this available and generally like WayForward has said that um, they are interested perhaps in offering their services. Um, 
they not necessarily did it to everybody, but um, for the right partners, they might be interested in kind of you know working as uh, as kind of someone to help get through all the paperwork for for games that they're particularly interested in. Um, but we we know that certification is a scary process for people. We don't want to overpromise that we're going to solve all those problems, but um, we definitely want to help with the community and just kind of sharing that experience and um, as, as much as we can within the non-disclosure disgrace so that it's not as scary for people. Thanks. Hello, um, good presentation first. Um, yeah, I noticed uh, the uh, mode on uh, Wii U seemed to be running a bit slow. Is it something you're concerned about? No, because um, that was running in debug mode through the debugger. So that wasn't the release mode. Also, mode is perhaps not the best demo to do because it has intentional slowdown in it. Whenever you blow up a little, um, a little, uh, one of those little bases, it intentionally slows down the frame rate as like a cool effect, which is um, perhaps not the most impressive demo. It was the one we had on hand. And so like there, like um, it can run a lot faster. Like when it's in release mode, it runs, you know, like twice, three times, four times as fast. So um, we're, we're, not, we're not concerned about uh, performance at this stage. It is a bit early and there's a lot of optimizations left to do, but um, we're, we're not particularly concerned at this point. You know, we can run, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be confident we can run 1080p content on it, 2D, you know, at a, at a good clip. Okay, thanks. Hey, uh, what about the licensing of the, uh, that console abstraction layer you told? Yeah, so the current plan is that um, our little partnership is going to uh, form some forward-facing entity, and you would talk to that entity, you know. And um, so you wouldn't have to, like, sign a deal individually with, say, WayForward. They've actually told us they don't want that to happen. You know, they want us to kind of get it all together, and then we'll talk to the community, and you would talk to us, and basically, you know, of course, OpenFL, um, the stuff that's free and public right now will always be free and public, um, but just the, co the console stuff, will always require, um, you know, to get the Wii U SDK, you need to sign an agreement. So it's not an additional, it's not too much of an additional step to kind of get this. We're talking to the middleware licensing departments of all of these console holders. Like a lot of them have two tiered plans where it's like, okay, if you're using Unity, you can get in a little easier. And here's Unity for Wii U or Unity for PS4. We're looking to see if they will, we're having some productive conversations with them about arranging the same sort of thing so that it's a lot more seamless for people to use this. Um, uh, and we, we just need to finish those conversations. But um, we know that people don't want to get caught up in crazy licensing negotiations or anything. So we, we want to make it as simple. It's like, here it is. Here are the terms. Is it, does this work for you? Sign. It's yours, you know, et cetera. Um, and uh, we're, we're not looking to get into a knockdown drag out fight with Unity. So this is mostly a community kind of cost sharing uh, initiative rather than you know, take over the world, you know, sort of thing. So um, we're, that's, that's what we're doing with licensing right now. Okay, I've got one question from Twitter from Lewis Lipton. Uh, he's asking if uh, once the Wii U will be phased out uh, and the new 3DS will be out, uh, is there something planned for, for your framework or well, uh, th that's actually, w when the Wii U is done, like, what are we going to do? Yeah. I mean, that's the same question as it's like, what, what do you do when, you know, um, people stop using an old Android phone model? You know, it's, I think the Wii U still has, uh, has a, good, a, good, a, a good lifespan left, and um, we're, gonna we're going to um, plan to support it for as long as it sticks around. And uh, the new 3DS and the old 3DS, you know, I think people sometimes underestimate how long old consoles uh, stick around. Um, Persona 4 famously launched on PS2 long after everyone thought the PS2 was done and it, like, did great. Um, and so, for instance, that's a reason we're planning on targeting the PS3 is because that's actually, like, a still really good market, but people are focused just on the latest stuff. So um, when it's absolutely dead and gone, you know, years and years from now, then of course we'll move on to new stuff. But as long as there is developer interest in it and still a viable market in it, you know, we're interested in having uh, OpenFL console support for it. 
Um, will you have 3D support? And if it's, this is the case, it, will it be in the step one and a half, step two? Okay, so um, the question was, will we have 3D support and when will it be available? And so um, WayForward Engine, of course, is already uh, a 3D capable engine. And Lime is also 3D capable. Um, the three game examples we used, you know, are mostly 2D games. They're not, they don't really push the 3D side of things. But we're definitely going to, as soon as we possibly can, I mean, we've already rendered some simple 3D examples. Um, we're going to hook up the low level 3D rendering API to Lime and expose that to you. So um, that, that, that you can at least get started there. And that should be available in, in phase one. Um, for phase two, we want to, that's why we want to have these early conversations with people who are interested in using this. So that if there's someone who has like a really good test case of something that really pushes the boundaries of 3D, we can start making plans for that early. Um, so that we can um, make sure that that is well supported when it's time for that to roll out. You talked about games, what about applications? Yeah, so that's another thing is that game consoles, um, you know, Netflix has famously used uh, game consoles to just get their apps out everywhere. And so a lot of people talk about Hex. It's like, oh, Hex is just for games, but, you know, also has these great web uses and also applications. There's so many um, of these game consoles that are installed in various people's houses. So, of course, you know, um, and this is a really great opportunity for people who are developing apps who are perhaps limited. It's like, okay, you can use our little HTML5 framework or you can use our little whatever. It's like who want native access is um, if they use this, then they can get to that native access without having to dive into the weird world of the SDK, you know, this strange place and just build six of these things all from scratch. And so um, we want we want to work with app developers just as much as we want to work with uh, game developers. And we think the system should be able to help them just as well uh, in exposing the full power of the native C++ SDKs of all these systems. I think, Todd, did you have a question? Yeah, thanks. Uh, actually, my question is along a similar line, but I want to stop for a second and just say what an awesome partnership between you guys, uh, uh, Nilsson, Lars, uh, Joshua. I think it's just great. I don't know your friend in Texas, but this is awesome stuff. Um, so we do an, an app, not a game, I think is fair. We're not Netflix, but we want to put video on the platforms. Can you talk about, like, have you looked at video? Do you, have, you, have you thought about a game that has, you know, trailer video or video cuts in it? Like, how, how do you think about video as, is it just an asset or? Um, I'd have to, uh, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to go look at some SDKs and maybe get back to you. But I mean, games run videos all the time on these platforms, and I can't imagine it wouldn't be part of the native SDK. So, yeah, so if what, that's a demand, the yeah. yeah, if that's a demand, then we should support that. You yeah, know? I think uh, also there, there's a lot of streaming video in the video world. Right. The games are probably packaged assets, and it might be a little right. different, but I think what you guys have built is an incredible platform. Like, extending it to where you're going is, ve is very interesting. Right, and then the, the networking and streaming side of things is also something that we're going to expose as well for all of these platforms. And uh, Nils's is networked game is our first test case, but we're going to be very interested in other uses that kind of push the boundaries to make sure that we can support those. Uh, hello, hi. Uh, I'm fairly new to this topic, but uh, I just wonder, is it possible for a small company to effort, to, to pay, or how much are the, the license fees for these, to get started with yeah. these certification process? Yeah, unfortunately I'm not allowed to quote any numbers today, but um, we understand that people have options, we understand that the engine and middleware market is extremely competitive right now, and that if you're trying to build a for-profit company in that space, it's a bloody red ocean. So what I am allowed to tell you is broad strokes. I'm a small company, um, and I want to make this available to other people like us. You know, there are some hard costs that even if we weren't in the picture, you kind of have to pay to do consoles at all. And so we're trying to do something that is like not unreasonable for people who are already making those decisions. And in terms of where we're going to put those licensing fees if we have to, it's going to be mostly geared towards just enough to maintain this and support it and just basically deliver, deliver it, you know, pretty close to cost. Um, there is a possibility, and this is not a promise whatsoever, but I do know that Unity, like Unity gives away, gives away, you know, Unity on PS4 and, you know, Nintendo and stuff for free, but that's almost certainly because they're being subsidized by the platform holder and they've got some deal worked out. And so I'm going to, in an ideal world, maybe we could get the same deal so that there would be no end cost to the end user. Um, 
And hopefully those magical chocolate ponies arrive, um, but if they don't, we still intend to make this affordable. So um, I'm sorry, I can't give exact figures, but we know that everyone has that question and concern and the goal is to get people to actually use it. And so um, it, it shouldn't be unreasonable if you can already afford to do console development. And uh, yeah, that's as much as I'm allowed to say, unfortunately, until things are signed in ink. Thank you. And I was just wondering, obviously for lots of developers, it's quite hard to have all these devices to, to, to work on. Are you planning to have like a lab where you could sort of upload them and test them? You pay a small fee to have them tested. Oh, that's interesting. Back or something. Like on actual hardware. Okay, so there are a couple options available for testing how it might work in console land before you actually make the dive into consoles. First of all, the, uh, the, and, there, and there's like three levels to that. So the first level is, you know, it uses the same OpenFL and Lime API. So much like people develop games um, using Unity on PC and it's like, it works, okay, I can be reasonably assured that it's probably gonna work on consoles. And in practice, maybe, you know, that's only mostly the case. But, um, you know, there's at least that one level. When you're developing for Android, you usually have like an Android emulator or an iOS emulator. Um, one of the targets that WayForward supports is actually PC. They use WayForward Engine to like deliver PC games. So we've actually created a target um, called Console PC. So you can do Lime Test Console PC. And it's the console engine running on your PC, which sounds a little bit redundant because we already have Windows, Mac, and Linux targets. So you probably wouldn't use this to actually ship anything, but it will show you running on your PC without any additional hardware dependency, you know, what the console stack is gonna use. It uses the console renderer and the console stuff. So that's kind of level two of, uh, of preliminary testing. If it's like, okay, I'm using the actual tech and this is how it will probably run um, using all of the, 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 the special console stuff. And then level three, like you talked about, is a great idea, you know, like some sort of lab where you could have someone else maybe, you know, test your game on, on the actual hardware and like give you feedback, you know, because maybe you don't have the agreements in place, but they do. Um, I'm not sure what that would look like, but I will try to start those conversations um, because that does sound like a really cool idea. Um, but it was something I honestly hadn't thought of until you mentioned it. Or, or maybe like a, a lab in different countries where you could go in and all the devices are available. Yeah. So maybe Massive might have one in London and, and someone... <laughs> Twin motion might have what, and you could just go in there and pay a bit of money to test it on all the devices. Yeah, a lot of that's going to depend on buy-in and agreement from the various console developers. Um, but I mean, I'll definitely ask them, see what they say. Um, so again, uh, the game console has have these like multi cores and threading and stuff. Do you wanna like? Do you plan to abstract this to the OpenFL? Yeah. So. Um, I can't go into details, but we are aware of that, and that is, you know, WayForward Engine is built to run on all of these systems in an optimal way, and um, it knows about stuff like that. Um, we can't talk about too many details at this point, because um, I'm not allowed to reveal any trade secrets or anything about the internals of how it works uh, in a public talk, but... Um, you know, we, we've, we've definitely seen some threading and memory stuff that um, is, is, is handled. So will developer have some access to that in the hex level or not? Um, like hex access is, um, I probably shouldn't go into too many details, but um, like I, I think it's safe to say you can do threading like you do in hex right now. Um, I probably can't tell you specific details about the way WayForward Engine is structured by default in terms of what it uses threads for or anything like that. But I can tell you that like, you know, like a hex thread will work. You know, it will depend on the platform about how it works, you know, and what that platform it specifically supports. But, you know, it's like the stuff you can do right now in hex, you know, we, we, we will support the full standard library, you know, as much as that specific platform will support it. And so, um, and we don't plan for this to be a least common denominator thing. You know, we will support whatever things that the native platform will let us. And like, uh, just everyone will just like fire a hex thread or a worker thread, that should, should work. Thanks. Anything else? Welcome to Gunship.